such a hard time. You have some fabric scraps, right? <laughs> Gotta read the instructions, I'm telling you. Hello, hello, my dear sewing friends. It's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity. We're all at home. It's 12 in the afternoon. That means it's crafternoon time with Elisa and with you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me company. I really appreciate that. And I really loved reading all of your comments on the previous video where we actually made some really cool greeting cards by using your sewing machine, actually, and some old gift bags, beautiful gift bags. And we turned them into some really cool cards. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link it in the info box below so that way you can have two crafternoons in one day but today what we're gonna do is we're gonna bust some scraps or we're gonna do some scrap busting and uh, you have some fabric scraps right <laughs> at this point I think it shouldn't be even a question I think it's a statement because I know that everybody has some scraps and last week I actually did a full compilation video of 10 free sewing patterns that would be perfect for using up your fabric scraps and one of the projects I was really excited about I'm still very excited about so it better turn out really good so one of the projects was making socks and I already traced my pattern the free sewing pattern is by Alien Mac I've never made socks I've, I've, period <laughs> I've never made socks you know I know that a lot of people knit and they knit socks but I've never and I do knit as well but I've never made socks in any sort of way not by sewing not by knitting not by crochet not by any other way possible so I don't even know if they're gonna be comfortable so you know what what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew we're gonna try them on and I'm gonna give you my verdict and I hope they turn out because this fabric that you all well know and if you've been watching me for some time you know that this Harry Potter fabric and you know that my family is huge Harry Potter fans like everybody my family my parents my sister my husband my sister-in-law's husband so my brother-in-law I guess I'm not sure about the relation of the family members, but anyway, everybody loves Harry Potter. So when we went to Orlando this past summer, because that was the first time in five years that I got to see my parents, um, and we went to Universal Studios to Harry Potter World, I decided to make it super special and to buy this fabric, this Harry Potter fabric from Joann's, and make everybody matching t-shirts, which is really cool, except for the fact that this fabric gave me such a hard time time working with why because the print wouldn't match up so the you know the way the print is printed um, it, it's not even so when I was cutting oh man it was just another story seriously another story so I ended up having a lot of very irregular scraps that I can't really do anything with except for probably socks and it's really nice and stretchy too so the regular scraps are so small and so awkward that I can't even like sew underwear out of them and you know um, I don't you know anyway <laughs> story of my life so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some socks uh, we are gonna cut out our pattern pieces and you know what the only question that I had is and I probably should have read the instructions first how many times have you gotten yourself in a pickle like that where you make something, you don't read the instructions, and then you wonder why it actually didn't turn out? So uh, I was like, oh, what size should I, should I cut? So I cut, I don't know, the size 10 to 11.5. So that's the size that I cut. So we'll see if it actually fits me or if it's gonna to be too big because I assume that when you make socks by sewing them, fit is key. So I really hope that I nail it because I have quite a few of these remnants as you can see. So I really hope that I can use them up, make some socks for the whole family and uh, get rid of it, finally. Alrighty guys, so while I'm cutting this out, you need to let me know what has been one good thing that happened to you yesterday. Remember yesterday at the beginning of the series, I told you that we're gonna focus on the good stuff. We're gonna think about all the positive things, all the bright things. We're gonna look into the future um, and think about all the fun things that we're gonna do once this whole thing is over. So you guys think about it and you let me know what has been that one good thing that happened to you yesterday. And I'll, I'll go first. I will share with you that we had little chickies hatch 
little tiny little itty bitty little chickens. We had three and my husband is the one who takes care of the chickens and who does all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, you know, they're just very precious. So, um, super happy and it's so exciting also, you know, it's spring and the Easter is almost here. So it's really fun to have little chickies in the house. And then of course I have a one year old, as you guys know, and she just loves looking at the chickens and then she reaches out and she's like, Chee! You know, she can't really say chickens just yet, but you know, you, you could tell that that's what she's trying to say. So uh, it's really fun to watch her. And then we have a cat who just sits there and has no idea what to do with them because, you know, she's a domesticated cat. However, she's she's some sort of like a Norwegian forest cat mixed with Maine Coon. Um, but, uh, but yeah, she just looks at them because she has absolutely no idea what to do with them. So that was kind of fun thing, you know, to uh, realize that Although we might think that life has stopped for a moment, um, nature just keeps going, you know? There's chickies hatching, there's uh, tulips blooming in our garden, um, and nature is just still going. So you let me know, guys, what has been one great thing that happened to you yesterday? So let me cut these things out. Um, and I guess I should probably think about positioning of the print, but you know what? Uh, I just want to see if this thing actually works. So I'm not really gonna bother myself with, um, you know, trying too hard to position the print. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Because I don't want to cut like in the middle of the, of the you know, large enough remnant and then realize that I just ruined a big piece of fabric just because I wanted to match the print, but the project actually didn't work out. So. I'm gonna do what I can do here and see how it all works. Oh, and while I'm doing that as well, you know what? Um, let me tell you what's the deal about the map. So the map, um, I'm not sure if guys if you know or not, but uh, back when we used to live in Las Vegas, and by the way, we live in Smoky Mountains in Tennessee right now, uh, I used to work at Starbucks. And when I used to work at Starbucks, I bought this map to try track, um, you know, like coffees and coffee journeys and stuff like that because I was studying uh, to be a coffee master. And the funny thing is that I'm not a coffee lover at all. I'm actually a tea drinker, like a, like a hardcore tea drinker, and I don't drink coffee at all. Anyway, we bought this map, and I think just kind of like life got in the way, and um, I never got to do anything with the map. So uh, right now, this week that we're staying home, I found the map and I was like, you know what? It would be so cool if we actually map it out where everything, where everybody is at. And I think it would be another great reminder that we're alone together and how cool it is that technology nowadays lets us connect and um, maybe physically we are alone, but there's still some people that keep us company. You can come to my channel and have crafternoon time with me and I can read comments and, you know, kind of have, you know, virtual conversation with you. So I think it's uh, really cool. And I know that yesterday, guys, I asked you about where everybody's from and you guys are from from all over the place. So, so I see a lot of Europeans, so it's really fun to know that you guys are watching from Europe because for me, that's a very nostalgic kind of feeling as well, knowing that there's a part of Europe um, in my heart uh, forever because you know that's my home. So while I was having a verbal diarrhea there for a moment, I actually went ahead and put this together. And you know what? It's actually pretty easy to put this together. The only thing you have to like really realize, okay, this is how I'm doing this. And you gotta read the instructions, I'm telling you. Otherwise you'll be like, huh? Like where is this actually going? Why, like what? Where's the heel? Where's the actual sock? Because yeah, uh, you know, never done this before, so first time. But to construct it, if you know what you're doing, really easy, it only requires like, what, one, like two seams, three seams? Anyway, the only thing that didn't come out the way I wanted is um, where you uh, lay the heel, the, the, you know, the bottom part on top of the top part, it's really important for you to not to catch too much of that heel seam 
Um, otherwise, it's gonna like really chew it up in there. And then when you turn it, um, you know, inside out, it's just gonna, yeah, it's just gonna look like you're, you like you pinched the fabric. So I had to go back and undo it. So the first one really kind of looks, mm, you know, but it's okay. I'm gonna be the one wearing it. So you know what? I can live with that. I just really wanted to see if it works. So I just have to attach the band to the sock and then we're gonna try it out. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at this. And you know what the, the cool part is that this print is actually matching over here, which I wasn't even trying to go for. Literally, I wasn't trying to go for it. Um, but let's see. Uh, my, my hand feels pretty comfortable, but you know what? This time we're not talking about hands, right? We're talking about your feet. So I gotta try this on. No, let me just, let me just, uh, you know, try it out, try it out, try it out. I will, of course, demonstrate that for you guys. There we go, putting it on. And the verdict is, uh, it's interesting. It's, um, it's an interesting feeling. I think that the heels seem, well, I think I will need to adjust the tension on my serger for this fabric. And I knew that, you know, way before, you know, I think you've seen on the video that it was a little wavy, but uh, it's fun. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a sock. So, I mean, it's fun and it's wearable. You know, it's on my foot. It doesn't feel awkward. It just feels different, I guess, you know, but you can definitely make some socks this way. So let me make another one this time knowing what I'm doing and I'm gonna make sure that I don't pinch that heel and we'll see how that one turns out. All right, I have two socks done. And as you see, the print is not matching at all. It was just really almost impossible matching the print to make sure that they both look the same. So my advice would be that if you are making socks from your fabric remnants, then I would go for a print that is really, really, really small and repeats uh, really often. So that way you wouldn't really worry about, um, you know, matching the print or I would just go for solids um, and just, you know, be done with that and make it easy or just make them mismatch. You know, that way you really don't have to worry about matching the print or matching the fabrics or anything else like that. And one of the inspiration uh, photos that I found for you guys guys for that uh, 10 free sewing pattern video for your scrap fabric uh, used velvet fabric and I believe that was from an anthropology and I do go on that website quite a bit just to have that some inspiration for some interesting uh, sewing makes so um, that could be a nice idea as well you know making you know making those socks out of something a little bit more luxurious I guess would be the word or maybe something a little bit more unusual something that you wouldn't really make socks out of necessarily you know for everyday use but you know when you want to pamper yourself or when you want to make a gift for somebody maybe that could be a good way but I have two socks it works and uh, the pattern is good. So definitely keep the pattern. My only concern would be if you're making those as gifts, you gotta know the size. You gotta know the size of the person because otherwise they're really not gonna fit because it's the fabric and your fabric has to be at least 50% stretch. So that's another thing, but you know what? If you have fabric scraps and they're really odd and irregular, then this could be a cool project at least to use them somehow. Otherwise, what you're gonna do, just throw them out, right? So that way you're at least using them somehow. Just, you know, wear them when you're gardening or I don't know, wear them when you're cleaning up the house or something, you know, if they're really mismatched. But other than that, I'm happy with my project and thank you so much for watching. If you missed an episode yesterday, definitely check it out here on your screens. But other than that, tomorrow I'm going to see you for another craft afternoon. We're going to do some other fun sewing stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.